Okay. So welcome to the uh, inaugural meeting of the Standing Committee for, for Standards of Appropriateness of the His Pueblo Historic Preservation Commission. This is the inaugural meeting. Uh, we're going to just try to make it sweet and simple. Um, on the agenda, we're going to just establish the agenda for today, make, make sure no one has any corrections or modifications. Then we're going to have a work session, and the work session is going to introduce ourselves, have some just clear up any questions and answers about bylaws and process. And then we'll uh, do a work session discussion about murals, because uh, at the request of Laurel, uh, that we would start talking about that and that's that's a lot of reasons why we want to put this committee together and uh any other discussion then we'll have new business which will just establish uh, the executive officers of the committee and maybe talk about what what might be the agenda for this year for this committee and then we'll adjourn um and if we don't if and um if you feel like we can't get to all these items today that's okay especially in light of the technical difficulty i just had so um but let's definitely get started. Just in time, AC's on, so, all right. Um, anyone, any questions about the agenda so far? Does anyone have any uh, modifications to the agenda? No. Can I, can I get a motion no. to approve the agenda? We have a quorum, there's three three commissioners, so we definitely have a quorum here. Yeah. I so, I so move that we accept the agenda as, um, sent out and verbalized. Can I get a second? I will second. All right. All right. All in favor. I'm going to do a quick roll call. All in favor, uh, Matt? Say aye or yes. nay. And then Laurel? Aye. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Carolyn? Aye. All right. The motion passes unanimously. Let's begin the work session. So, welcome. And this, uh, this meeting is being recorded. So, those of you on the call and those who missed the meeting because of my bad, you'll be able to watch it. So, and we'll pick up the pieces from there on out. Um, let's introduce ourselves. So, I'm Alan Lamberg, Senior Planner with the Planning and Community Development Department. My colleague here is Barrett Odom, Principal Planner. She's, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, also on the call here, we have Laurel Campbell, and Matthew, uh, Matthew Taylor, Matt Taylor, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah or Matt Refick, I mean, yeah. yep. And then Carolyn Trent, and, and Carolyn Trent is a former uh, commissioner on the HPC. So uh, I just wanna get everybody a chance to briefly introduce yourselves. So uh, Laurel, we'll go Laurel, Carolyn, and then Matt. So Laurel, can you introduce yourself to the group? Sure, um, I am a commissioner, I have been for, oh my gosh, almost eight years. Um, I was past chair, and uh, I'm just a preservationist. I'm into all sorts of things. Goodnight Barn, the Pueblo Heritage Museum, Frontier Pathways, um, preservation and history. That's that's my thing. Thank you, Laurel. Uh, Miss Carolyn, would you like to introduce yourself and your background here for the group, please? Okay, I'm Carolyn Trent. I was on the Preservation Commission the first eight years and chaired it and was vice chair and uh, did a lot of the work for uh, the first studies that were done, going out, taking pictures of places and uh, working on getting uh, all of the necessary paperwork for the beginning of the various studies that were done. I also have been involved in the community in other ways. I was instrumental in the start of the Chilean Free Holy Festival 25 years ago. And now I am uh, trying to find things in my house. We just moved. <laughs> oh, yeah. Congratulations on that. Thank you, Ms. Carolyn. And Mr. Matt, please um, introduce yourself. I, yep, I'm Matt. Refik, I'm just uh, a local artist um, and a teacher, and uh, I do a lot of murals around Pueblo. So, right on. And I'm yeah. glad I'm glad the three of you are here. And again, I will endeavor to keep in touch with the others who I may have accidentally disconnected from this meeting set up. But um, but it is good that the three of you are here because um, this is this is a good opportunity to focus on the, um, the mural the murals question, or at least to get started. You know, to start having these discussions about murals in uh, historic districts, 
Um, so, but before we do that, does anyone have any questions about the uh, the procedures for the committee or or the bylaws? You know, you might have seen them by email some time ago, but does anyone have any questions about that at this time? No. Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on to the topic at hand. Um, so at, when, when uh, Laura was chair of the HPC in the last few years, she had brought up at, at other meetings, uh, the commission, she brought up to the commission that maybe we should talk about uh, creating standards of appropriateness for murals in historic districts. But before we do that, we wanted to use this committee to, to really discuss it and, and speak with not just preservationists, but artists such as Matthew. And, and to get it out and just kind of get this discussion going within this committee, get some feedback from stakeholders, and then just form a policy so that this committee can, can make a recommendation um, on the standards of appropriateness and then take that to the Historic Preservation Commission, which can later on amend our standards of appropriateness. So just briefly, I'm going to share the screen again, just for a moment. Uh, where'd it go? Here it is. And so you can find the standards of appropriateness on pueblo.us forward slash HPC. Takes you to our landing page for our Historic Preservation Commission. And when you click on the link about design review, it opens up a page that has a link to the standards of appropriateness. It was adopted by the City Council in 2005. Um, it, it, it has guidelines about historic landmarks and places in historic districts. What's pertinent to this discussion is that there's a section in the standards that talks about exterior materials and colors. And it talks about paint and it talks about don't conceal original facade elements and uh, don't paint on exposed historic brick and but that's about it. It's not really pertinent to artwork and it's not really pertinent to uh, murals in particular. So what we've seen in practicality, now I've got up on the screen now a uh, memo that we put together last year. It, the, the problem at hand is that historic preservation cases in recent years, we just, we, we didn't really have any standards to, 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 to refer to murals. So, so just briefly, in 2014, I'm just going to list four cases. In 2014, there was an unauthorized mural in the in downtown uh, his, uh, Union Avenue. So the the commission, everyone kind of took a pause, and then they said, "Okay, let's put it before the commission." And that's the case number 14-4, and that was after some discussion that was approved without any conditions, uh, with with. Uh, Campbell and Webb dissenting. Um, so at that point, that's a good, that's in 2014 was the good milestone in that, hey, we might have an issue here and we should address it. And we should maybe make a process for, for, regu for uh, looking at these murals. Um, then, then the following year, actually there was some positive progress in that in 2015, uh, uh, Matthew, I believe, was involved with uh, the High Desert Mural Festival that was coordinated by Urban Renewal. And uh, that was, uh, that went through a very good process, a lot of good discussion. And then, then we had, we saw some murals in Neon Alley. And then uh, in 2016, we had a mural on a removable panel at the Arts Alliance building. That was easy because it's a, a panel. Right, and then right. in 2018, we had an administrative approval of a mural on, on non-historic stucco. Um, but, so I did that administratively, but the, uh, the commission and Laurel said, hey, still, maybe should we start, should we talk about murals and, and how they refer to historic context? And so we thought, well, let's keep them. So maybe we should, one of the things we should do in the near future is look at other cities' rules, especially in Colorado and Fort Collins is a, is a, is a very good example. But I'll make this information available with the committee that we can study this and talk about it. And there's lots of information that Laurel put together for starters too. So I'll make sure that after this meeting to email this to you all. And so we can kind of stimulate some discussion about it. So uh, with that brief presentation, um, 
let's 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 hear from the commissioners about your thoughts on this issue and so we can kind of work towards a very constructive solution in the future so um you know since uh, matthew's here would you like to share your thoughts on artwork and murals and, and such yeah in downtown yeah um well i mean you know like murals are a really cheap and effective way to uh, you know change the environment you know like you can do a mural in a day or two that will change the entire community. So um, they're very powerful in that sense um, because of what they do and how they can change an environment, you know, for, you know, a couple thousand dollars or a few hundred dollars, you can change the environment. So it's like something interesting and unique that people come and see. So that's like the power that I see within them. So, um, you know, that's why I enjoy doing them and I can see why we're having this conversation because they're in public view and, um, you know, they're, they're affecting the entire community. Um, like for me, I, I'm not really like tied to painting them in historic districts. I, I, I kind of, I kind of just, uh, one, it's my business. So whoever hires me to do it, I do it. Um, which is the case of like the first one where Duncan, um, the owner of that building hired, hired me to paint it. And um, I, you know, whatever his reasonings are bef behind it, he wanted it done. And um, so that was just kind of how that came to be. Um, for me though, I'm not really, I, I mean, I just see it, like I, I paint murals all over the country and um, I've seen just really retired communities like Fort Collins, and Greeley and Denver and Los Angeles and all these neighborhoods. If you want to redefine a neighborhood, just start putting up artwork, you know, it's like definitely a good way for it to, um, to really redevelop the neighborhood and it's really cheap and effective because I mean and effective because it's just um, it's relatively easy to install them it's just a coat of paint and and most of the time I mean the only time I've ever painted on raw brick was at Duncan's building um, which from my understanding came in the end because it was actually not an exterior wall originally historically the other building that was next to it was torn down so um, I think that was like the loophole that allowed it to happen um, at least that's what I was told when we went to a city council meeting about it but um i mean for me i'm not i can understand like people wanting it to be this historic thing but also um you know it, it costs money to erect them and there's no money to talk about other than the building owners wanting to improve their buildings and that's how any of the ones that have been done down there besides the ones um behind like larry's electric which was just a cinder block wall it, um so all the other ones besides the one on um, Duncan Hendrickson's building have been all just on non-historic walls, really, in, in, in that district, at least. And so um, I'm not sure um, really what we should what we should do. Like for me, I'm like really into like freedom of expression and speech, and like I feel as if the, like that should be the main thing as an artist that it should be about like artwork instead of um, you know like something that is you know like less less progressive even though I'm, i like historical murals the, the problem is is i've lived here for eight years and like i don't see a whole lot of progress happening with anything so it's like well if somebody wants to hire me to make it a little nicer i can do it next week and that's kind of like the power of them to me and why they um mm. why to me they're they're nice and powerful and it's just a coat of paint on a wall you know that's like the only thing that i'm always like i don't know why they're so controversial i can definitely take them down much faster than i put them up and I'm not, I'm personally never tied to the artwork. I'm like, just change it. You know, if it needs to be something else, then, then turn it into something else. But um, personally, like, like in the case of Duncan's wall, like nobody was ever going and taking pictures of his brick wall. Mm. And now I see it as the, you know, there's, there's city websites that use that image as their cover photo. True. And I see it on so many, so many, um, you know, senior photos. It's like, it's photographed everywhere, you know? And that's why I think it's like, you know, if, if, it, if it's just going to be left to decay because the reason that Duncan had that painted is because it's soft brick and something had to be happened so he had it sealed and then he's like well it might as well be painted because it just has a sealant on it and it's just decaying it's just still deteriorating well and Matthew no wor let's not let's not worry about the past let's 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 all let's all move to the future because that's the whole point of this committee is to is to well, really figure out you know, like, yeah, so, so like just in context of the past, like, so I, I mean, for me, I see it as like, it, like if there's funds available to like put up historical murals, then I think that that should be done. But if a building owner is in wanting to have one done and it's just on stuck over a brick wall, I don't think that there should be too, too much discussion about what that building owner 
should put on those aside from like the front facades of the building which are like you know those are those always fall under to the regulations anyways yeah. so okay. i mean that's personally how i would do it just because like, i mean as long as it's not vulgar or obscene i feel like it's going to attract people to go into those districts no matter what they are you know because like um that like what level of historic accuracy do we want to have on these murals anyways like i mean union was filled with brothels and a lot of bad stuff so like is that what we're trying to represent are we trying to be like let's move forward and make pueblo like an arts scene that's like in a, in the historic district and making it um progressive in a way that it's like honoring the moving forward and, and so into a new new history where pueblo has this really rich tradition of mural painting that um like for me i'm like probably the leading muralist in this community and i i don't even go in that district anymore because i don't like uh, i don't even like when people ask me to paint i don't ever aim to paint in that district just because it's it's a pain so i paint in all these other spots of the city you know and mm -hmm. so it's, i feel like it should be open to the arts because it's cheap and effective and it gets people to go to that district where right now it's it's really not very you know bustling with anything so for me, I would be like, just honor the traditions of like whatever can be honored and then the stuff that's deteriorating, maybe turn it into a work of art. I don't know. Yeah, well, thank you, Matt. Okay. I'm sorry. I, can I ask a question going back to the city council adopted uh, the standards of appropriateness in 2005 sure, Ms. about Chair. what it said about uh, brick, original brick, Sure, go ahead. What, what's your question? Well, what it, what it, what was addressed in it about original brick? Oh, uh, it stated on a building in the yeah. historic district. Right. It uh, it it says um, it says it just basically says to not paint on uh, historic brick is all. That's that's the main rule. Which is which is what we, which is where we're sort of starting yeah. from. Right, right, that it should not be painted on historic brick. All right, see, even though uh, it was soft brick, and it was elected to paint it, I would like to know was a sealer put over everything before it was even painted on because. I worked at Summit Brick and Tile for about five years, and painting is a real no-no on brick if we're looking at the long term because people change their minds as the decades go by on what they want on it. And are we looking at trying to preserve not just brothels, other signage of that time period? Are we wanting to look at moving forward with the time period that we are today, another 50 or 60 years from now, hopefully a number of these buildings will still be around 150 years from now. But I also recognize the maintenance that has to be done on all of them over the years to maintain them. Right, it is an education question uh, uh, to uh, educate about maintenance um, for sure. And, uh, and you raise a good question. Uh, should this committee, as we explore murals, um, should we be focusing on uh, what they call ghost signage of, hist of murals that were existed from before and restore them or and or uh, focus on new murals like new art like what Matthew does. Um, I know I'm pretty sure from what Laurel mentioned initially at the HPC in, in recent year is to focus on how do we treat new art, new murals. Um, and so that, and that is an important question, I, I would say, for this committee. And um, I do believe that we can all work together on, on um, creating a mural guideline and, uh, that protects historic places, particularly. And because and, we don't, just to be clear, we're not, we're not looking to restrict murals of public art elsewhere or in non-historic neighborhoods. That's for certain, Matthew. But um, let me just quickly share on the screen the uh, Fort Collins example. Uh, this is, Laurel had pointed this out a couple years ago, that this is from the Fort Collins downtown guidelines. And um, it's just one page, and, and Carolyn, I'll email this to you if you hadn't seen it already. But it's just a one page guidelines about new murals. Um, and it just talks about some best practices. So 
maybe we could start with working towards something like this for historic districts and landmarks. Um, that could be a component to explore together. Um, and, and as for the question, I'm gonna stop sharing now, but as for the question of um, painting on br exposed brick, that's the most sensitive question. Um, but we could also incorporate that question in the mural guidelines as well. But definitely let's work together on this. Let's take time to study it. Let's take time to each go do the research and bring the four pros and cons, for and ex against, kind of work together and, and find, and again, get some feedback from the community and, and come to come up with something. Just sound good? Does that sound like a good plan overall? Yeah. Laurel, do you I wanna... see this. Oh, go ahead, Carolyn. Carolyn? Yes, I see the real question is how long do we hope to preserve what we have of the buildings on Union Avenue? And by that, I mean the structure, uh, uh, stability, all of that, uh, which does involve maintenance and looking at what is done to the structures added onto it for maintenance or enhancement of whatever is decided by people within the community. Uh, you know, what do we want to bring back to people about Pueblo 150 years into the future? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I see that as the real issue. Um, all we have to do is look at nationally and what has had to happen over the, the decades of the White House or other old structures uh, in the country. And yes, I do think there need to be some standards and guidelines established for both preservationists and artists or muralists, whomever wants to uh, take a stand one way or another. And we don't want to kill one to save the other mm -hmm. or sure. uh, save one to kill the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I guess I am very much interested in historic preservation and I uh, was a later comer in life to it because uh, growing up in Missouri, you know, uh, there wasn't a whole lot talked about it. And then when I lived in the Washington, D.C. metro area and toured a lot of places, that's where I started to realize how long you want to take care of and do what is necessary to preserve these structures for those coming along later in life. And um, I started the Abrando Inn in 1989, thinking about all of that with what I was trying to do both inside and outside. And of course, that is what the commission acts upon too. Um, and I, I feel like we have not done as good of an education of the public as we need to. Um, I talked to Laurel earlier about, um, you know, all of these properties that are landmarks. I feel like yearly letters need to go out to the owners of those properties, reminding them of what the property is and what they need to do to preserve it, to remind them. And I understand the city has a limited budget as everyone does anymore, but I think we need to look at other organizations if they could take that on. I know in the early day, earlier days of Historic Preservation Inc. when I was president, I remember sending out letters to all of those properties that were landmark. And no one else has really carried it on year after year. And it was talked about in the past about any properties that are being sold. When it's being sold, they need to notify the people that it is a historic property and with some guidelines. Not that you want to kill the sale of the property. It doesn't have to kill the sale, but to give some guidance to people and see if, you know, whether uh, 
the Pueblo Historical Group or Historic Preservation Inc. can alternate back and forth saying that these letters go out every year uh, to further educate the public. That's what I feel like has to happen for the standards to really be understood and thought about. Oh, for sure. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ms. Carolyn. That is true. Uh, I think we all can agree on that. And um, I think that is also why, you know, among these three committees that we work to establish between the planning, the standards, and the education committees, the education committee, as we get that off the ground, that'll be a great opportunity to educate the community and perhaps, and, and any one of us in this committee are, are welcome to work with the education committee uh, and to maybe pursue that idea on outreach, that idea about outreach to property owners, business owners, to help inform them proactive. That has been discussed in the prior HPC meetings as a potential idea, but you're right. We, we haven't really been able to, to commit to it, but I, but I think we all can agree that, it, I, think, I think we all can agree that outreach, proactive outreach and, and information is, it would be a good thing to do. Um, yeah. Uh, I do agree with that. And is it, is it okay if I bring it back to the uh, standards and mural discussion? Because I do want to give Ms. Laurel a, um, a few mi minutes to speak on this too. Is that, is that okay, Carolyn? Uh, yeah, that's all I'd like to say. In addition, I think we need to look at uh, things that can go out on the internet all the time because now so many younger people are not paying attention to uh, the local newspaper and the local newspaper used to be a way that you could try to educate some of what was going on um, with preservation. Uh, you would have to promote it <laughs> to get it in the paper. For but sure. now you can do a lot through the internet. Social media, well, yeah. uh, I've talked enough. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carolyn. Ms. Laurel. Um, what can you share your vision for this committee as far as murals? Well, um, am I? I'm not muted, am I? You can. No, you're good. Right? Okay. First of all, Matt, your artwork is is great. I have nothing against that whatsoever. Um, and I'm sorry, but I have to go back a little bit in history. I know we need to move forward, but when we when we had the uh, I call it the chicken and chili uh, mural, um, and we did have a vote on that. Uh, David Webb and I dissented only, and the reason was is because we had no way to approve this. And uh, I think that it starts with the owner has to understand he owns a, a historic property a, uh, that if it's on the, the register and he can't just do whatever he would like. And so that was probably the initial problem. Um, and then, um, you know, he hired Matt to do it. It's a beautiful mural. It's just nothing that we had ever anticipated. Um, and it was on brick and that's what bothered a lot of people. Um, so my, my thought on that, just getting past that, that's where that all came from. I did as chairman, uh, and Alan will agree that I pushed a letter. I, I pushed sending out something to all of our uh, properties to let people know, uh, you know, that they're on the register and these are things, not, not saying you can and can't do this, but, you know, these are things that we can help you with if you have questions. Um, and I also used to be a real estate agent and I have said recently in the recent past that there should be um, a disclosure if you're buying a historic property because Otherwise, it's just in your title work, and who reads that? I, I certainly don't. Um, so people need to know what they're buying. So that's another issue that in going forward. Um, but my my issue would be let's let's talk about uh, having some sort of um, uh, approach to this where you have to come to Alan first with the uh, you know like the owner would come to Alan, and then he would either approve it or, or send it to our commission. And at that point, we would have the artist rendering. We would be able to know exactly what was going on, just like anything else in the historic district. It's like a covenant. When, you, when you're in a, a historic district, you, 
I call them covenants because people understand what that is in a community where you can't do this and you can't do that. That has nothing to do with the First Amendment. You're buying a property or you're have, owning a property in, in a district that has rules and regulations that go above and beyond that. So just understanding that is probably important too. Uh, but I think there's a lot we can do moving forward to um, have something to say about these things. If you remember, uh, Matt, after your uh, mural went up, shortly after that, the people that owned the coffee shop painted a coffee cup with a skeleton coming out of it. And at, at the meeting where we, uh, we voted on, on whether that mural would last or come down, I said, you're opening a door because we don't have any rules or regulations on this and you're opening a door for people just to do whatever. And that's what happened with that. And of course they were told, mm, take it down and they did. Um, so since then, I think there's two others, Matt, the sunflower and the girl escaping the fire. Um, they're both lovely, but um, we didn't know about it. And um, that would be my, my first impression is that someone has to come to the commission in a historic district or with a historic home and say, this is what we'd like to do. And that way we kind of avoid any issues. That's what I see. I think that we need to have a, um, a code, a mural code that actually says, this is, you know, this is how we start this. This is how we do this. And slight point of order on that point, uh, just to, Matt, did, just to refresh everyone's memory, Matt did come to our office with the uh, sunflower mural. He, he definitely went oh. to the administrative review. It's just, yeah, it's been like a couple years though. So, um, and that is true. So the, we're already on the same page as far as process. Mm -hmm. You know, we're definitely on the same page as far as process, which is great. Those are steps in the right direction. Um, and I appreciate Matthew for, for your willingness to work with this process, because I think you said, because you are respected in the community as a muralist and artist, and that you, you set a good example for other artists in the community by doing that. It's like, it's like what I'd like to tell people here at the planning and zoning, you're being a good neighbor. You know, I like that. It's, it's good for the community. So, so, but there's no doubt that we can do the admin review process and, and, and make it easy to do that. And it's just, it's just our, our objective now is to, is to decide if, if there's like a like a like a, um, a regulation pertaining to murals, and not so much about the content, because we don't mess with the content at all. We we don't even look at it. It's just the scope of work, the scope of work, how big is it, and what is it going on. Uh, that's and where that's what we should be looking at, and we should do some research and and find some pros and cons, and maybe even look at if the maybe our city attorney's office can help us explore the question about what are the limits of free speech in historic districts as well, because I think that was addressed by Scott. He mentioned that that our law office might help us look at that. Mm -hmm. That's why we're talking about commercial signage. Yeah. yeah. We can restrict murals, <clears throat> and then especially being in a historic district, and I think traditionally it was intended that, well, all the signs reflect some sort of historic style, Right. Or context. What Barrett's referring to, uh, Barrett had, may has, I think she's already seen, because she did a lot of work with our planning department about advertising and signs, our sign code. And um, but we, what we can do is, is we can dig up the, uh, the the case law that talks about legal precedents and pertaining to historic <laughs> districts, and we can use that to refer to as well. Um, so that way, whatever we decide on is reflective of contemporary America. You know. And, and Colorado, so we could try. We could that we could use that as as, as good research as, as well. Oh, uh, right. Okay. And Barry was referring uh, to right. historic context, like that's one that some some neighborhood some cities might limit murals in a historic district that the content would be appropriate to the historic uh, period or the choice of content. But that's, see, that's a really difficult, that's the most difficult issue of all because that's regulating content, that's regulating speech. We don't have to allow murals. You're talking about commercial signage. So okay. I think what we need to find out from Laurel and Carolyn is yeah. what do you want to see? Do you want to prevent more modern artistic works? 
do you want to limit it to a, a more historic traditional type? No. Mm. That, that's what we need I, to know. And then we can develop some guidelines based on what right. your, your recommendation Just know, mm. Barrett, just know that I've done a lot of research on this and I I have spoken with Fort Collins and Savannah, Georgia, and other places where uh, they have mural codes, and I've read them. And mostly what they say is that it has to be unremovable. So you could put a big sheet of metal and do something on that, but it's removable. Okay. And they also do control the content. Okay. Um, we are in a district where there are rules. So I think you do have that you do have the ability to uh, look it over and see what is appropriate and what isn't. Everybody's going to have a different definition of that, of course, but it has to be something. In, and if you look at the codes in all these different places, uh, Oregon, Ohio, Minnesota, Georgia, New Mexico, I have looked at all these different places and they are uh, even Lodo in Denver, they have rules on contents and, um, it can't just be open if okay. it's in a district. That's is my there, thought. Do, do, they, do, they have, do they have rules on what stores and stuff go in there though? Because like my, my biggest issue is that that area is kind of a ghost town. And, and like the, the, the spot next to the coffee shop, for example, has been abandoned my entire life. I'm 38 years old and I've never seen anything in there ever. It will be. Yeah, but in 38 years, I mean, am I gonna yeah. die now? And then, <laughs> no. like, I've, I've, I've worked really closely with, with six different building owners down there. All of them kind of have a problem with the Historic Preservation Committee because it seems that not just with murals, but you suppress a lot of growth down there. So like when I was working with Larry's Electric, like he, he has had chicken wire on the side of his building for 25 years because he can't do anything else. It's just chicken wire. And instead of like concerning myself with what mural, a coat of paint, which can get removed instantly, like there's like chicken wire that's been there also my entire life and there's no there's no like uh easing up of that so there's like these like blighted areas that are completely like just that's just the way they are they're not even trying to change and um i think that like a lot of the building owners down there are concerned that these this committee essentially is like suppressing the actual growth of that you know like beyond just the murals so like with duncan when he had the building plan he was kind of doing it despite you like that's why he did it because like he was like, well, what am I supposed to do? I cannot afford to fix all this brick. It's not the value of the brick getting fixed isn't worth the value of the building. And so that's why he was like, I'm just gonna paint it, I don't care. That's like why he did it. And that, that's like been my- I don't care was the problem. <laughs> yeah, but, but neither, but the thing is, is neither do you because like he's, he doesn't have any help and he's like not gonna invest all that money to, to fix a building that's not worth it. As a businessman, as a person who he is, he's just like, this isn't, it's just not feasible, you know? It's like. I'm gonna do something and um, that's what he did. And, and he's, you know, I mean, he's a wild dude, but he's also friends with like Joe Concilia who also has had issues with your committee about his properties and, and, and Larry who's had issues with you about, about his properties and, and Charles Escabel who's had issues with you guys about his properties. And um, I think that that's like the bigger overlying issue is that there, it's not just that the murals are colorful, but like you guys, like it seems to me from my experience is that it's a suppressive type of thing instead of like, let's work through this, let's get some, let's all work together to make this a really flourishing historic district. It just ends up being like in the, in the eight years I've lived in Pueblo, like it has not changed really at all. And, well, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I think that that's like the biggest, the bigger issue is not just that like, cause our, I, I mean, I, I personally don't care what goes out there. Like I paint all over the city. I, I mean, I paint all over the state and country really. And my biggest issue is like, why isn't that district growing? You know, like I see all these other historic districts across the state growing and not because of murals, it's, they're not mural districts, but I mean, I feel as if there's gotta be something that's gonna have to be a catalyst to change that environment. It's because, it's because we don't have a tourism board. That is the whole reason that we don't market. And I have tried to talk, I think it needs to be taken away from the chamber and given to a tourism board, but that's a lot of work and there's a lot of people that don't want to hear that. So, but that's the problem is marketing. But like I, I, I my work is in, theater in all the newspapers across the state and people come from all over the state to see it. I've been told so many times that people move here because of my work, like, and so, 
if we just like take into consideration that, that people are going to come and see murals and, or, or just artwork in general because it's interesting. I feel like, they, like it doesn't have to be in the historic district, but it's something to consider because the way that our historic district is right now is nobody's coming from anywhere to see it. They used to come and see the levee, but the levee is gone now. And hopefully that gets repainted. But, you know, like that's just my perspective on it is that it, it has the power to draw people in and bring in the economy instead of being like, nope, don't do it. Let it just keep rotting, which is what I've seen since I moved back here eight years ago, that it just is just in a state of decay, you know. And um, I think that that's like the really the biggest issue. Excuse me, Matt. I think we could debate this for quite a long time, but I think what we need to look at right now are some examples and some um, guidelines for murals, and then we can maybe discuss uh, the intricacy and the different styles. But Laurel, could you would you possibly share with us maybe some of your the the um, codes that you've looked at that you prefer? Well, she already has shared that with me. Oh, you I, have, I could, yeah. I could share I've that done, with the group. Yeah, and I've done more research since then. Okay. But, but basically what I sent Alan, it's basically what I'm saying is there has to be control. Um, and, and, it be, and like I say, it's like a covenant. You know, we can't control what goes up downtown yet until it's a district, when it becomes a district. Uh, we can't control that, but we do have control. And the people that are not happy with us on Union, I've never seen them come before us except Jim and Joe, and uh, we usually work with them. And I, you know, I mean, when they built those two businesses where the the uh, um, what was it that blew up? Um, they the knew branch, they Bramble. yeah the branch and they knew they couldn't make it look old. They could. You know there there are rules they could not just do whatever they wanted to and they didn't have to build there if they didn't like it and i'm i'm not I, i'm just saying that people have to know that there are rules okay so if we have a staff level draft uh, kind of an outline for an ordinance and then start looking at that yeah okay and if that's what you'd like that's to exactly what we okay. need and matt should be a part of that because he He's an artist. He wants to show his art. He says people come to Pueblo to see it. Well, there are people that just love murals, so they'll go wherever. Uh, there are people that love historic districts, and you know they they come to see that. Our our district probably needs a little help. It's a lot better than it used to be. I can tell you that. And um, you know we have tried to uh, make uh, and you know things go up. And Alan knows this. Things go up and down. They, they're not really allowed. We allow it to happen the sandwich boards and things like that, which I don't see any issue with, but they're not supposed to be there. Um, and we just, our code came from other cities. So it's not like we were making up stuff to uh, make anybody upset. And that's not what we were doing. We just have to have some rules and, and, and Barry, that's exactly where we need to start. Okay, very good, we'll do that. And I would also want to say that maybe now is a good opportunity for us to teach each other uh, about, educate each other about uh, these diverse viewpoints. This is this is why we have this committee, and I think Matthew uh, and Laurel, in particular, you are you are now uh, at a position to to work together and educate each other on the values of the preservation angle, and the values of free speech and art, and and why these two values help our city and how these two values can coincide. That is our goal. On the mural question, yeah, and I, I mean, do I, believe we can work together on that. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to, you know, make anybody upset or anything because I'm not the know-it-all, be-it-all person. But I just know that, you know, I have to follow certain rules too, and we just have to have rules. And whether they're what I want or what Matt wants or what Carolyn wants, we need to decide that. We need to discuss yep. it and decide it. Cool, uh, Carolyn. I had to, act, I had to mute you because there was a lot of background noise. But Carolyn, if you could unmute yourself and. And, um, and that way we can do some final thoughts here before we wrap up the meeting. Uh, yeah. But um, so that, I think we've got a lot of good, that's a good start. That's, we, we got all the, uh, the past out of the way. Now we can move <laughs> towards the future. So that's the right. most important thing. Yeah. 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 What do you think, Matt? You, you willing to do the work with us? Uh, yeah, I mean, that? absolutely. Like, I mean, I, I'm really not opposed to like whatever regulation you. My biggest concern is just the culture of Pueblo, and yeah. and I, I'm I'm very concerned in the lack of growth in our historic district compared to like when I go and paint in like Trinidad's historic district, which is oh, like yeah. 
booming and there's there's awesome murals all over the place and they have a tourism all board. Over the place. <laughs> and, <laughs> but but yeah. at the same time pueblo's just it's just kind of stay stagnant and that's my biggest concern not so much about what murals are going on it's like what I, I've seen murals de redevelop the worst neighborhoods in the United States. I've been part of it. I've seen them just like, you start putting artists in there, it will not be the ghetto anymore. And so when you start restricting artists, it's just like, okay, well, nobody's going to move in there, you know, because it's like, it's... Yeah. And Matthew, can, that's right there. Can you, when you do your, you know, your research, can you just outline in like a one page example, just cities that had trouble with restricting artists, you know, just to kind of counterbalance all these things, yeah. you know? Yeah, for sure. Cite some examples, and that way it'll really help kind of level the, level this out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I and I can you know I just want to say uh, reiter reiterate again, Trinidad's an excellent example, and they have no money. I mean, and Pueblo, we don't have a lot of money either, but they didn't let that stop them. They went out and they marketed and they did what they could to get people there every weekend or at least every couple of weeks. They have something going on down there that draws people there. And the problem that I see, because I've been in this area now for, I mean, you know, in the preservation and historical area for quite a while, the problem is, is that Pueblo needs a tourism bureau, someone that just directs everything, markets everything from murals to, you know, this is maybe has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but it does in a way, because Matt, your point is well taken. We don't have any stuff, signage on the highway that says, come down and see our beautiful historic district. There's nothing to draw people. And I've been talking about this for a year or two now, and it's really hard to get through to people. I mean, I think like for me, like it's not about murals. Like I, I do so many types of art. Like I love beautiful architecture too. It, to me, it's yeah. just like, how do we come together as a community to like make that district nice and, 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 and approachable and something that people want to come and see, you know, like the river walk is really beautiful and people do come and see that, but then they don't walk up the historic district because it's not like there's no pools up there. And for me, like I work as an artist, but I, I, I mean, I work all over the city really. And so people go to those districts, but we don't really have a designated arts district either. So I think that like, that's one of the downfalls of what is happening is that there's just no cohesive plan of what it is. Like, like, like you go to like Francis Storch, it's, it's so interesting because it's just, you know, they have like a cohesive plan. It's all, it's all, um, you know, um, thrift shops and it's awesome. When people go and they go thrift shopping, but as in like our historic district, it's just like there's a mattress store and there's a, there's a well, law that, firm and like there's all these things that it, it's not just about like what, what good it point. looks like. It's what that nobody's going to see because there's no cohesive plan to what is going on. Good point, good point. Plus, their hours are terrible. Yeah, and their hours are terrible. And people, yes. people should be like coming together as a community, but like how do we make this community flourish? Because it's like, um, like murals are an interesting way to go and have people walk by them. But if there's nothing to do beyond walk past them, it's limited to that. Like nobody's gonna go. Cause it's so like, we okay. Have, we have more than just a problem with murals. We have a problem with our, the perception of people. And we can help with that, Alan and Barrett, we can help with that. But when when we talk about there's not much to see when you walk down Union, yeah, we got we got attorneys and like you said, a mattress shop and a and things that don't draw people. And that is because they were just trying to fill space for a long time. You know, it, it was empty. But yes, we have to have we have to be like Florence, where we have, you know, twenty antique shops or something like that to get people down there but we also need to advertise it on the highway and we can't get that done so yeah i mean that's i, I like i think that's like the main issue that needs to be addressed is how do we create like a cohesive thing whatever it may be that is like okay you walk up and down it and it's really cool to go from top to bottom of it which is also what trinidad is like i mean it's filled with weed shops and stuff but that's what they chose to do and I, i'm not saying we should do that because I, I i'd rather not do that but if we could find something that was art galleries or mm -hmm. antique shops or our own thing that's like exactly. that's, what the, that's what that's what that thing is and people come to pueblo to see whatever it may be you know uh yeah. you know, well yeah. when we go on to move past murals and we're Hello, just real, real, real quick uh barrett's oh, gotta oh, go thank you. I'm, oh, I'm sorry gonna, barrett I, goodbye, don't barrett. Get, I don't get to talk with matt matt and i, I know. should yeah. probably yeah. talk but, you know continue. Thank Bye, barrett. Thank you. i can stick around Bye. i can thank okay. you barrett. well i just wanted to say that he has hit on some great points what kind of businesses do we lure down there what are their hours they have no no um association that has any guts 
and they've been talked to for 30 years about what they should do and they don't do it. So they can't blame the commission for everything. You know, they have to blame it on their lack of knowledge on how to do things. So, And, and I regret that, that Mike Mahan's not on the call. That's my fault again, uh, because I goofed up the uh, link, but I, but I, I think Mike Mahan would be in a business owner in Union Avenue would be a valuable member of this discussion moving forward too, because he can bring his perspective uh, as the proprietor of the gold dust. That's when yeah. he bought the gold dust a few years ago. He's I've talked with them. I'm sure he's going to be a great help on this point as well. And how, how a revitalization of our downtowns and our historic districts is important and, and, and how, how uh, the preservation standards and how, and how art plays into that. So I think he's going to be a good member of this discussion as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ms. I is, is Miss Carolyn here? Let me. Click on. Still there. She's muted. Yeah. I, Can you apologies, Miss Carolyn. I had to mute you because there was some background noise uh, a little earlier. But if you get a chance, please go ahead and unmute yourself and chime in. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she'll join. She'll chime in whenever it's built. But go ahead. I'm glad you two are are finding your common ground on this way as well. It's that's the whole point of this. Meeting. I think we've been well. hearing. I think we've been hearing things in the background. And yes, I can get, I can get, you know, uh, Alan knows I can get upset about certain things, but if we don't sit down and talk about it, it'll never happen. And murals is just one issue. I mean, there is so much in the standards that we need to address. And I, I think it can only be good. And I will tell you, um, you know, that all the things that I'm involved in is to help Pueblo, you know, maybe not the historic district, but when we get the, the barn is done, you know, it's been six years of my life for that. And it's done and it's going to, in the future, be a Western Heritage Center. Pueblo will come back, will come up. We just have to hit the right notes and we got to get the right people on board. Yeah. So. And both you, both Matt and Laurel, uh, the work that you do in the, our community is, 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 is uh, uplifting, uh, audiences or, or people yeah. or certain demographics, you know, like yeah. the good night barn appeals. I bet you, if you say the demographics behind the good night barn is that maybe predominantly, I mean, of course, all these things are people of all ages and all walks of life, but predominantly demographics, there might be a particular demographic that the work you've done, Laurel, with the good night barn, and might be a particular demographic for the murals that you've done, Matt. Exactly. And yes. both of you are contributing to our community in your work. And that's, I, I want to celebrate that. And I know all the members of this committee have done work yeah. uh, that really uplift this community. So that, I'm really looking forward to working with you all on this move, when, as we move Me forward. Me too. Me too. Yeah. And Matt, you know, if, if, if you and I need to talk a little more, I'm available. We could go have coffee or something like that. I don't want to, um, I don't want to cause any kind of issue uh, with anybody on this. I just think that, you know, we need steps to, do take steps to do things correctly. And I think that this is just the first step. I think there's going to be a lot more stuff that we're going to be able to um, progress on. And it's not just going to be murals. It's going to be, like you say, re revitalization. And, you know, here we are working on the possibility of a historic district in downtown. And Matt's right. We got to get it right on the other one, you know? So, I mean, I take people on tours all the time if they come through here because they don't know what we have and they're like, wow, well. That's yeah. true, yeah. <laughs> the, the ladies of the night tour, right? The oh Heritage, my God, the Heritage yes. Museum. Matt, did you, have you gone to that yet? I think <laughs> no, that sounds awesome though. <laughs> oh, you need to. Spencer at the museum does them every Friday and Saturday, you got a call. And I am developing a Mesa Junction walk, which I have done for Historic Pueblo Inc. years ago. And I'm, I'm, I'm redoing it because nobody's ever done the history of Mesa Junction. And maybe, it's, maybe that's I mean, what we should do as a committee is to why don't maybe that's an activity that we can do is to get together and do these walking tours because it's a yes. small group outdoors yeah, i have a south side a north side mesa junction pitkin place they're all tours that we don't get to pass well, uh, you know let people know about so well welcome back carolyn i see you've been uh, <laughs> unmuted yourself i have been dying to speak yes please 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 do time. my first, apologies go first, ahead please First of all, I've been a small business person. I have dealt with the Chamber of Commerce. Right I started the Aberindo Inn in 1989. 
I was placed on a committee there from the junior league that was an accidental placement for me to be on the convention and visitors committee. And the next year I was asked to chair it. I know a lot about what goes on and what is not going on. And I have batted my head against a wall for a long time. And I also know why many people have struggled on Union Avenue for decades and it's perseverance and love of what they're doing and we've not all drawn together and too many people think oh i'll start my business or i'll do this or that and everyone's going to come in that is not the way it happens and people don't know you get to pick your own 12 or 15 hours a day that you want to work out of the seven days a week in the beginning if you want to be successful the other thing i want to bring up about uh, Pueblo and art and what is going on in Union Avenue. First of all, I don't know if Matthew is from here or not, but in the latter 70s, early 80s, the first uh, big to do about an artist uh, doing something was on the levee wall. And it started with a bathtub and then they added the fish and it was called, it was Teehee was the group, and they would do it in the middle of the night. And there was quite a bit of uproar about that. And then pretty soon other artists started doing and adding more and more. And we ended up being on uh, Ripley's, believe it or not, or someone that we had the longest mural in the United <laughs> States. Well, of course, all of that had to be torn down because of uh, the safety issues in the last few years. So I want Matthew to understand that I think Pueblo is very pro-art. And I also feel like we have got to determine what our history, historic districts want to be about. And I know there are many other places in Pueblo that would love to have beautiful murals. Uh, <laughs> And uh, it depends upon whether the people have the money to pay for them or not. So I will sign off. It sounds like we have gone on yeah, a little think, bit beyond. Uh, I think and so too. Anyhow, look forward to the next meeting. Yeah, I think we've made progress. Thank you, Miss Carolyn. Thank you for calling. <laughs> and thank you, everyone. Sure. Thank you, Matt. Thank, thank you, Laurel. Okay. And let's let's definitely um, let's definitely do one of those walking tours sooner than later. Yeah, let's you know? do it. I, 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 I mean, I love Pueblo history. I think it should be honored so much. Like, well, especially that kind of stuff. It's so interesting. You need to, uh, uh, Matt, you need to call the Heritage Museum and talk to Spencer. He does them Fridays and Saturday nights and yeah. he's really great at it. I, yeah, you know. Which is better, when Matt? I, when I painted the Lucky the Mural Horse, he was like the person that gave me the tour of the, of the museum. Oh, so you yeah. got, okay. So yeah, you, yeah. Well, he's I'm, super I'm, cool, I like him. But for I'm, the ladies of the night walking tour, Matthew, which is better, Friday or Saturday nights for you? Um, um, it depends on which one. My schedule is always changing, but I can. Yeah. If you wanted to schedule one in, I can. I can. Do we'll it. I would go. Day, yeah. I would go with you too. I actually led one last year, but Spencer is much better than I am. I'm too old for this all the time, <laughs> but but I can tell you that um, he has the heart and soul for it. He does. You know, plus, plus he looks like general custer yeah he's, <laughs> he's got a good look for sure i always call him custer uh and i'm the president of that museum too so you see i got my fingers on a lot of pies but it's because i love pueblo and i'm not from here i'm from chicago and i would rather never go back <laughs> never <laughs> i would go back for the architecture okay, carolyn uh, yeah. do you want to join us on those walking tours too no? i'm sorry were you asking me carolyn yeah. do you want to go on those walking yeah. tours with us the uh the, the ladies of the oh, night I, walking I, tours? Why don't the four I, of I us... Done, I, done, I, done, oh, I guess I need to go in again. <laughs> yeah. Am I there now? Yes, yeah, we you hear are. You, we hear you. We hear you. Uh, okay, okay. I have done the walking tours going back from the very first ones. And, uh, of course, it was a fundraiser. And um, the judge, <laughs> Kathleen Hearn, was the one who started it all. And I will say that we need to have Friday, Saturday, Sunday activities. I wouldn't even mind if Union Avenue merchants would close 
Monday through Thursday and be open all the time, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I don't know how many of you went to Florence uh, 30 years ago. Mm. And you would go there just for the antique places. And, you know, it's grown a lot because of the hours that they keep. And people knew they could go there on weekends. And it it is promote, promote, promote. And um, we haven't been the best at it, I don't think, for some time. What I've been saying. And, And the other thing I will say, I attended a meeting, I don't know, a couple of months ago uh, that pertained to, pertained to all of uh, the South uh, Eastern District, shall I say, and touring and all of that. And you bring up ideas. Well, we can't handle all those people. Where are they going to park or whatever? Because I believe in trying to get bus tours. Let that be a problem deal with the problem once it comes right. uh, don't shoot don't shoot down things and before you find it as a real problem if we could get one bus tour to come through on a regular basis We're that would be on, wonderful carolyn frontier pathways is working on that heavily and i do agri tours oh, in the fall so i mean you know we really promote it's just that we don't have a you know have, how yeah you know, you know how it was shot down when I brought it up right away, though. And I think that is the number one thing. I mean, when I started the inn, I was promoting uh, our artists, our art community. Uh, I got people who came and stayed because they were interested in the art. And I planned out Friday night uh, where they could go and eat. And then Saturday, going on tours around. We have foundries. We have artist studios. All kinds of things that we need to be doing on a regular basis, particularly in the summertime. But now, I think a lot of more mature people, i.e. Laurel and I, <laughs> we like to go in the off season too. Sure. <laughs> so sure. I will, I will sign off. And, okay. Uh, all right. Thanks. So Thank, you, Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Miss Carolyn. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Bye. So if you guys want to do the tour, just tell me what day and I'll see if we can get in there. I know that he, unbelievably we had two weekends of tours last year and he's still filling them up every weekend. Right. It's amazing. It's because people want to be one outside where it's safer and yeah. they want history. So all right, I'll, I'll yeah. reach out to the other committee members too, and I'll see what yeah what maybe we can get a group them and try to get as many as possible, and we can yeah. just I think, have a little. I think he'll experience. take um, Alan. I think he takes. Um, I think his limit is ten or twelve. Okay. But he would do it twice in one night if we had to, and it's been a while. I could do it too, but I'd rather just go along and listen to him because he's great. <laughs> so. Great. Okay. Any final thoughts, Matt? You get um, the final absolutely. word today. How about that? Huh? What's that? You get, let me give you the final word today. Uh, how are you feeling? Is that a good? Oh, I, I'm doing, I like it. I mean, I, I, I'm happy to work with you guys and like be a good. part of it, you know? Cause good. I mean, I, I've got so much love for Pueblo ultimately, yeah. you know, like yeah. it, it, See, anything, anything to like improve the culture is like my, my, yeah. Uh, yeah. my work, you know, like. Well, I'm with you on, on architecture and all that. That's why I love Trinidad, but we have it too. We just have to spice it up and let people yeah. know so we could talk I, I love talking to owners of buildings too so we should talk because I, I end up meeting all of them in my work so yeah totally yeah like, like okay. hey check it out look at it from this perspective so, all right my granddaughter just came in and she's starting school today i better help her do that but thanks a <laughs> all lot right, all right thank you we'll do another thanks everyone one. all right thank, thank you, you. And apologies to those who missed the meeting i will do better <laughs> next time all this right. is a damn good meeting okay right. <laughs> bye-bye right. bye guys bye-bye Thank you.